What's up, people? Miss Carnegie here, um, giving you a pre-recorded lesson on volume. I understand that we're going to start today, so we'll go over what it is, the uh, essential questions, the definitions, and what it looks like, and how we're actually going to learn how to calculate volume today from this video. All right, let's get started. All right. So your standard for this one is nc.5.md.5, which is relate volume to operations of multiplication and addition. So in volume, you're gonna learn, you're gonna be doing a lot of multiplying, a lot of adding. So this is the time that we need to make sure our multiplication facts, our multiplication skills are intact. We know our facts, and also that we know how to properly add uh, numbers together. So you just need to be practicing with flashcards daily on your multiplications one through nines, because if you can understand multiplication, calculated volume will be a breeze. It'll be much easier than the, for those who don't know their facts. So this is how you practice your facts every single day. All right? So things you're gonna learn while we're doing volume. Uh, you're gonna learn how to find a volume of rectangle prism with whole number size lengths by packing it with unit cubes. You're gonna build a volume formula for rectangular prisms and whole number edge lengths in context of solving problems. And you're going to find a volume of solid figures with one digit dimensions composed of two non overlapping rectangular prisms. All right, that basically means you're going to learn how to two shapes together or, or gel together, not overlapping, but they're connecting to each other. And you're going to learn how to find a volume of that total shape. All right. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to find a volume of one, find a volume of the other, and then add those totals together. All right? Your essential question, what does volume, what does the volume of a rectangle present mean, and how can we use the area of a rectangle to find it? This is a two-part question. Two, 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 two. All right. By the end of this lesson, you'll be able to answer both of those questions. That's the goal. But by the time you finish the lessons, the work, the assignments, watching the videos, that you'll be able to answer both those questions. What does the volume of rectangle prism mean? And how can we use the area of the rectangle to find it? All right, these are some of your terms. The volume, which is how much space an object takes up. Uh, the length, how long it is. The height, how tall it is from the base to the very top of the shape. The width is how wide it is from front to back. Your base is basically your length and your width combined. That makes up your base. Another word for base could be area. With the area of fourth grade, which says area equals your length times your width. Cubic units is what we measure volume width. Your rectangular prism is like your 3D figure prism, prisms, like a cube. And then irregular prisms are the ones where they have multiple prisms Put together, and you got to find a volume of each one separately, then add them together. All right, here's a, a copy of an anchor chart. Uh, shows you, that gives you the definition of volume, gives you the, the formula for volume, one of them anyway. Tells you your areas, your length times your width. Then it gives us a volume, a cubic uh, figure right here. We got four as our height, five as our length and two as our width. Of course, the cubes inside the figure match the number. So we got two cubes going from front to back. We got one, two, three, four, five cubes going across, and we got four cubes going up and down, all right? So volume equals your length times your width times your height. So we got two, five, and four. Two times five is 10, and then 10 times four is 40. So this one is 40 units cubed. You see how they had that three right here at the end of units? If that three is not there, your answer is incorrect. So since we're measuring three sides, the length, the width, and the height, let's make sure that that three is at the end of our units. So we know that it's a, we're calculating a volume and not anything else, all right? And also the cool part about multiplication and adding is your numbers don't have to go in the, in the same order that they are according to the formula. For instance, Two times five is the same thing as five times two. They both equal 10. 
All right. So even if you go in the opposite order, that's fine. Your answer will not change. If I say seven plus three is 10, then three plus seven is also 10. All right. Adding and, adding and multiplying, you can switch numbers around, but it won't change your answer. All right. So what is volume? Volume is the amount of space a 3D, a 3D object takes up. So a cube, rectangular prism, things like that. All right. How much space does it take up? Well, how much, how much can it hold? How do you calculate volume? All right. The formula for calculating volume is there's actually two. All right. We got our length times our width times our height, which is this right here. And then we have our base times our height equals volume. Now, your base includes your length and your width together, already calculated together. So length times your width equals your base. In other words, length times width equals area. And here's an example of a rectangular prism. We have a length, oh, go back. We have a length of four meters. We have a width of 18 meters. And then we have a height of five meters, okay? So our volume equals length times width times height. So in this scenario, our length is four, our width is 18, and our height is five. So we got four, times 18 times five, all right? Now, essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna create two multiplica multiplication problems to solve this answer. There are two multiplication problems to solve this answer, all right? You got, first we're gonna do four times 18, which equals 72, okay? And then we're gonna bring the 72 down, and we're also gonna bring our five down, so now 72 times five. So the answer to this question is going to be 300 volume equals 360 cubic meters. Cubic because we're doing three sides. Okay. So now that we've done that, what we're going to do is we are going to look at our some handwritten examples that I want you to follow along and make yourself. So basically, we're going to create your own anchor chart within your journal. So go ahead and get your journals handy, and we'll be using those in just one second. So, okay, so now we're going to look at how to make our anchor chart for volume, okay? So I need you to, if you have to, pause the video as you're going along, but make sure you follow along and do the same thing as I'm doing, all right? So we're going to look at volume. Okay, so we're going to draw a cube. Don't have to be perfect. You're going to draw a cube. So give me a square. All right, we're going to draw an extension from the top corners at an angle. I'm going to connect it. Then we're going to bring it down and connect to the back side. All right, that's our cube. Okay, don't have to be perfect. Don't left my drawing. I'm not a great drawer. Okay, so now we're going to give our cube some measurements. Let's say this one is three inches. This one is, let's say, four inches. And this one is five inches. All right. So we got our length, our width, and our height. All right. Now we just said that the formula for solving volume was length times width times height, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna match up the numbers with what, what they represent. So in this case, our length is three. 
Our width is four and our height is five. Okay, so now, like I said before, we're gonna create two multiplication problems to solve this answer. First, we're gonna look at three times four, which will give us 12, okay? Then we're gonna bring this five down. So now we have 12 times five. And 12 times five is 60, all right? So the number part is done with, but we got two more things to add to our answer. The first thing we gotta add is our unit of measurement. In this case, it gave us inches. Sometimes it'll give you feet, sometimes it'll say centimeters, sometimes it'll be meters, whatever the case may be, yards, whatever the measurement gives you in your problem, you gotta use that same measurement in your answer choice. All right, so in this case, we can use inches, okay? Now, the fact that we're measuring three sides, our length, our width, and our height, we're gonna put a little three above our end. That three is highly important. That three lets us know that we're measuring volume, not area, and we're not doing perimeter. We're doing volume. Three equals volume. Why? Because we're doing three size. Three size, number three in our answer choice. All right? So you may see an answer like this, or you will see it as saying 60 cubic inches. All right, you may see it that way. Both of these are correct. They're just written in different forms. Both of them are correct. It's like having four quarters if all, or a straight dollar bill. They both equal the same. It just looks different. So this means this right here, 60 cubic inches, 60 cubic inches. All right, now that's the one, that's the one way we can do our volume. The other formula that we have that we just talked about from the presentation is base times height. Okay, so we're still doing volume. We're looking at now base times height equals your volume. All right, so what your base concludes consists of is your length times your width already calculated together. That's all your base is, your length and your width calculated together. Or in other words, from fourth grade, your area is all it is, all right? Nothing fancy, no tricks or a trade or anything like that, all right? So let's say that same shape we had, we said that our height, well, our length was three inches. Our width was four inches, and our height was five inches. All right. So now, when we're talking about base, all we're doing is we're going to include our length, our width as our base. So in this case, our base times height. is three times four times five, okay? So in this case, our base is gonna equal 12 times our height, which is five, which once again, gives us the answer is 60. Does it change the answer? All it changes is what numbers you group together to multiply. So your base equals your length times your width already calculated together. And in the other formula is just your length, width, and height calculated separately. All right, hope this helps. Hope you guys are able to learn something from this video. If need be, please go back, pause it, rewind it, watch it 50,000 times if need be. Um, this is just an introduction. We'll get more scenarios and lessons as the week goes on. As always guys, take care, be safe. And I hope to see you real soon.